Okay, before I get to answering your question, first we have to understand what Quickshell even is, because trust me, you might say, oh, I know Quickshell, but then you most likely don't. So to clarify, Quickshell is going to serve as building blocks for your desktop. So it's a toolkit for building status bars, widgets, lock screens, and other desktop compo components using languages, right? Using programming languages. So you can basically configure everything from your app launcher to your bar over here, okay? To your logout menu, to basically your lock screen and everything else you can possibly think of, right? Well, that's all well and good, but what, what if you're a beginner? What if you want to configure Quickshell, but then you're a beginner and then you haven't begun using Hyperland and starting to customize and rice this stuff for very long. Let's say you just got into Hyperland and rising Linux and whatnot, and it's probably been around one to two weeks. You somehow found your way to Hyperland and then you're actually doing stuff, which is amazing. Great, but then how do you actually translate that into progress made through Quickshell, where you're going to have to code? So how does that work? Well, the short answer I'm going to give you is it's much better to start with the basics than try and shoot for the moon and try and create something really advanced when you have no experience. Because the last thing you want to do is just get so overwhelmed that uh, that you never try out another rising tool again, right? So you got to make sure that you start small. So what you actually have to do is open your text editor, pick any text editor that you want, and then start by listing down each of the things, each of the parts of a computer that you want to configure. So let's say, for example, I've seen a couple of cool setups on r slash Unix Pawn. Okay, they have, a cool, they have a cool bar, and then they have a really cool app launcher. They have a, what do you call it? They have a really cool notifications panel, along with this log up menu, and then lock screens and whatnot. So we have all, all, all those stuff that I actually want. So all I'm going to do is just start by writing out a list of those. So first of all, most important thing is going to be the bar. Okay, bar, that's going to be the thing I'm going to be seeing most often. After the bar, it's going to be the app launcher and then my browser and then the GTK theme. Okay, so your GTK theme is basically just going to be the theme that you see whenever you open a app. Okay, so basically, if you're new to Linux or if you're new to Hyperland, there's two kinds of apps. Okay, we have two different UI frameworks, you can call them, that we can use to write apps. So we have either GTK, which is this app over here this app is written in a framework called gtk okay if you're coming from the web dev world there are lo lots of different frameworks you can use to write web pages right you have react and then you have svelte and then you have angular if that's still alive right you basically have lots of different frameworks that you can use to write stuff same way in linux as well you have two different mainly two different frameworks that you can use to write applications one of them is gtk and the other one is qt Okay, so a Qt theme would be something like Caden Live, or rather a Qt app. Okay, this is what cute apps look like. You also call them cute, but that is a bit of a side tangent. Okay, now your GTK theme, and then let's say you come up with a list of 10 things that you want to configure. Then all that's left to do is just pretty much go out there and start configuring. Okay, now one last thing before we actually get back to Quickshell itself, and let me actually show you what I'm talking about. So those were probably four or five things that I showed you, what you can actually configure. But in order to spark your thinking and your creativity, there's a lot more stuff that you can configure in Hyperland and Linux and stuff, right? So I showed you like four or five things already. So that's going to be your bar, then your Overwatch panel, then it's going to be your logout menu, and then lock screen, which right now the app isn't actually installed. So you know what? Let me just install that hyper lock. So we'll install it so I can show you the lock screen. This is what the lock screen look like. So you can just make a list of those things and then get started with configuring them. But if you want to know a list of more things that you can configure, actually have them listed out over here. So if I just show you, okay, so it's, I'm pretty sure it's in system reforging somewhere over here. Okay, yeah. So it's basically, the, okay, here. This program is the first link in the description, which basically shows you exactly how you can configure Hyperland to look like this, along with creating custom theme switches like this one. But basically, all you have to do is just set it up once, so I can open files like this, right? And then all I have to do is just choose whichever theme that I want, and then, as you can see, my terminal, along with my, you know, file manager, both of them adapt to whichever theme that I choose. Let's say I pick something like Nord Parker, as you can see, the theme changes in both places. I can pick something like Cappuccino, 
And again, theme changes both places, not just here as well. But then if I open VS Codium, it's going to change over here too. But you get the idea, right? You get the drill. So basically, all you have to do is just set up this custom theme switcher once with all your favorite themes. You just load them up and then all you have to do is just switch between them whenever you want. And then that's that. So I teach you exactly how to do it in this program, which is actually covered in theme switchers, right? So in this module called theme switchers, I show you exactly how to do this stuff how to create these menus and actually go about creating, you know, menus like these and whatnot. So if you want to know how to do that, you can just check this program out. But what we actually came here for was this. So in this module called desktop dynamism, I basically show you all this different stuff that we can configure to basically turn Hyperland into a desktop environment. So you can just take a screenshot of this, right? Use this command or you know what? Yeah, just take a screenshot using your favorite screenshot utility just copy this stuff write it down if you want to and this is like a bare bones list that you can use in order to get started with configuring stuff on hyperland so here we start off with lock screen app launcher logout menu poll kit poll kit is basically the password box that appears if you've used gnome or kde before you'll know what poll kit is all about right it's the password box that appears whenever you try and escalate privileges then screen capture you can use obs for that my maps dot list this is basically the list of default apps hyper idle is your idle manager so you can figure that one out and notification center is just your notification center along with implementing this brightness pop-up over here along with volume and mute and all the other fun stuff i teach you how to do that in desktop dynamism great and of course i not just that but then we also have to configure lots of other stuff so in an environment personalization i teach you how to do that in terms of wallpapers changing wallpaper status bar and whatnot Okay, then in status sorcery, I teach you way about hyperpanel. So basically, I teach you everything that you want, might possibly want to know when it comes to rising hyperland. So if you want to know how to do this without wasting time watching endless fluffy YouTube tutorials, you can just go ahead and check this out. Otherwise, okay, now let's actually get back to Quickshell. Yeah, what I was talking about was it's better for you to not get overwhelmed and for you to just figure out what you need to do and go and do it. Great. And we also covered what exactly to configure. I showed you that earlier. Okay, now, here's another idea that I want to point out to you, okay? Think about it for a second. If, with Quickshell, you can actually do lots and lots of cool stuff. So there's this repo of quickshell.files called n4, end4 slash dots hyperland, okay? So if you click on this link, you'll find that there's a lot of stuff that you can do with Quickshell. You can have AI in your sidebar, so you can just... Take a look at this AI over here. You can hook up whichever AI model that you want into it, and then you can use it along with having lots of different widgets. So you have settings panels, and then you have this side panel over here, and then you have your terminal, and then you have basically a lot of stuff. Well, great. And not just that, but then you have more features like this clock thing. That clock, by the way, is actually sort of a dynamic clock. So what happens is that this clock looks at your wallpaper okay it uses ai the clock uses ai quick shell it, it, it's just ai infused right so it takes a look at, it takes a look at your wallpaper figures out where the least busy spot is okay figures out the spot where the most less stuff is basically happening in your wallpaper and then positions the clock there so that the clock is much easier to read and not just that but then you have other little quality of life stuff as well like parallax wallpapers so i've created parallax wallpapers in my own instance of Quickshell, but that's a story for another day. What it does is basically zooms into your wallpaper a slight bit and then shifts around the wallpaper, like left or right, depending on which workspace you move to. So that's also pretty sweet. And not to mention a gazillion other features that you can possibly have, right? Now, is a beginner going to be able to configure that despite not knowing anything about programming QML, which is the language that this toolkit is written in? No. I will have to be completely honest and tell you that no, it's not going to be possible for you to do anything, okay, without knowing how the language works, okay? And I mean literally anything, because setting up the dev environment itself is probably going to really leave you winded if you're not used to setting up dev environments and actually coding, because there's a reason why Quickshell is different, right? It's completely different to conventional rising tools like Waybar, okay? You see Waybar over here. Waybar is actually pretty simple. To even whilst you're configuring, okay, even whilst you're configuring custom theme switches and whatnot, like Waybot is extremely simple. I didn't have to write too much code or pretty much any code at all when it came to this. All I had to do was just define the styles that I had to, okay, and then define 
uh, my config.json.ce, which is basically how this looks. And then that's it. I didn't have to do much else. And what that allowed me to do was create a theme switcher, which allowed me to switch themes without complicating things too much. But Quickshell is actually written in a programming language. That's right. Also, if you've used STDM before, you'll probably know that it's a Qt app, right? So again, Qt app, it's related to a bunch of UI frameworks and whatnot. But basically, if you want to create a theme for SDDM, okay, if I just show you, oh, never mind here. Yes. So if you want to create a theme for SDDM, you're going to have to write code. You're going to have to write QML. In fact, if I just show you, it says that here, Quickshell is a relatively low level tool compared to simple status bars like Waybar. So when you're writing a Quickshell config, you're not just changing styles and layouts. In fact, if I show you what Waybar looks like, okay, my Waybar config, this is what it looks like. So I have inside of the colors folder, I can just show you how this works, right? So inside of the colors folder, I have colors.css, which references custom slash any one of these colors, right? So I can pick whichever color that I want uh, from this huge list of colors. And then what it's going to do is basically change this colors.css file to pick whichever color that I chose, blah, blah, blah. That's how that stuff works. Great. But apart from that, there's not really much else. If you got rid of most of the colors over here, let's say you had one or two colors, okay? And then you had one file over here, and then you didn't use an app launcher.sh, which is basically this app launcher, and you got rid of a bunch more other stuff that's pretty redundant and possibly useless. Like all you have are just two files, config.json.c and style.css. That's it. What did they say over here? You're going to have to code. Now, <laughs> the reason why a beginner shouldn't even think about touching Quickshell is this. So if I just show you what the QML language reference looks like, okay, this is the QML language. The QML is also known as QT modeling language or cute modeling language. Pretty cute, I know, right? So basically, this is a version of JavaScript or you can use JavaScript in here. There's a lot of stuff that you've probably never even come across before, like property bindings, okay? And then they allow you to, okay, it's, it's quite puzzling to explain unless you've done it yourself. And I've coded with Quickshell a slight bit before, but unless I actually sit with it and learn it in and out and work through it, it's pretty, what do I say? Complicated for me to explain it to you in a simple way, right? Basically, all you need to understand is Quickshell is configured in QML. And QML is this kind of language where you're actually going to have to write code in order to achieve a desktop bar like this. Not just that, but then you're not working with CSS over here, okay? You're working with QML again. Everything is written in QML. So all the styles that you're going to have to define, if you're used to CSS, you are not going to have any of that, okay? So you don't have any of the liberties that CSS gives you. You don't have any of the liberties that JSON gives you. So you, you, you kind of screwed if you have no idea how to code. That's mostly the premise when it comes to Quickshell, which is why I would not recommend the beginners touch this. Once you've actually started to dip your toes into Rising, and then perhaps you want to go into the deep end of Rising, and then really make your setup look next level, because you might be able to get away with creating a Quickshell config. You might be able to create a bar, and then an app launcher, and then a lock screen, and then a logout menu, and blah, 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 blah. Yes, you can do it. I can do it too. If I can do it, you sure as hell can, right? If I can do it, you can too. So you can definitely get it done, but then making it look good, making it look good is just something completely, completely different. So what I'd advise you to do is just stick to the basics, make sure that you can make setups that look half decent or at least good to you in your eyes, because those are the only guys that matter, right? If you can make setups that you actually like and that you prefer using without using fancy desktop shells like Quickshell, you should be able to eventually start picking up QML in order to start rising Quickshell. But until then, stick to the basics. Make sure that you don't end up drowning in the deep end right before you even dip your toes in the pool, okay? And have fun. Also, if you want to know how to make a custom theme switcher like this one, as I've mentioned earlier, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program that I mentioned, okay? Now, if you want to save time without having to jump through 50 different YouTube tutorial hoops and then wasting nights, days, weeks, how much, how much ever time I wasted, okay, trying to figure out the right information as I was making this setup, if you just want to skip all the bad stuff and just go straight to the good stuff, that program right there is perfectly for you. Otherwise, if you're just here to enjoy the free content, go ahead, do so. And that's it. 
If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay rising.